Right, we're on again. So yeah, uh, another thing that I, I found when I was speaking with um, Muslim debaters, the, especially the young lads that I speak to in the streets, Muslims, they say to us, show me a passage in the Bible where it says Jesus, where Jesus says, I am God, follow me. And you know, I find that a ridiculous statement because I can always turn it around and I can say to the Muslim, you show me a passage in the Bible that, that says Muhammad is a prophet road, and to believe in him because the Muslim claim is that Muhammad is in the Bible. So I pose the same question to the Muslim. Show me a passage in the Bible that says Muhammad is a prophet and to believe in him. If you can do that, yeah. then, then, I, then you know, that's fine. You've got a case, yeah. You've got a case. Mm. But no, nine times out of ten. Um, what else is there? Uh, <coughs> oh, pardon me. What, um, <coughs> here's a question. What would we say, what advice would we give people? You, you and I have watched quite a few, I've been down to Hyde Park and you've watched quite a few videos, and I have, yeah. of Christians debating Muslims. And so what advice, Continue son was in my house. Uh, so what advice would you give, and I give, to people who are going down to Hyde Park debating Muslims, what, what would you say? I would say if you're going to go and debate Muslims, that you do your research, that you spend a lot of time researching what Muslims believe, and also what they believe about Christianity as well. Because you have to be well prepared in these things. Um, you can't go in with, a, with, a, with a, just a, a smile and a prayer. You have to research what you're talking about, know what you're talking about. And also, if, even if you do go down there, with, even if you are well researched, um, you may make mistakes, but it's always best to be prepared because they will attack you. Really rip you apart. Yeah. yeah, I would say the same. I would also say go with people, uh, a team of you, have a team, don't be isolated. Go with backup, have people praying for you. And uh, only discuss with those who really want to know about the truth because there'll be people there who all they're trying to do is just pull you down, make you look stupid, and, and you're just going to waste your time. So I'd be very, very careful when you go when you go down. Uh, and I would encourage people to go down, pray about it, but be very, very careful. Uh, do your research, pray a lot. Go with a view to preaching the gospel and seeing souls saved. Don't waste all your time debating and, and uh, keep focused on the gospel and preach the gospel but like Mike said um, go prepared they're doing it every week ripping Christians apart every week and if you think you're just going to go and do a bit of study for an hour and go down and think you can just be okay you, you, you're going to be found out because they'll pick, pull you to pieces you need to do a lot of research uh, before you go down we did a lot of research you looked at a lot of videos of theirs you uh, studied a lot didn't you and I studied a lot we did a lot of research and so we will go down at some point <coughs> at some point Amen. Amen. but also yeah you just watch their videos on YouTube in Hyde Park look at the tact look at what they're saying and in 300 yards, basically I would right make notes on that street. and be prepared because they will throw everything at you don't let them sideline you as well. Stick to one topic, yeah. one or two topics, and don't move off that topic. Know it, know the strength for that topic, know the weaknesses of it, and basically um, find a weakness in right what they're saying as well, Street, so that you've got a, a good chance of um, not necessarily winning the de debate, but also to stand against any falsehood that yeah. they may throw at you. Yeah. Totally agree. So I totally agree with what Jay says. Don't go on on your own. Go with a group. I pray a lot. Thank you, Mac. There's the alpha course on there. Yeah. <laughs> Probably to the left here. Down the wrong way. Okay. So I'm going to be careful.
going. Oh no, where am I going? What? Yeah, no, I'm in the wrong gate. I should turn right here. Alright. It's too early to stop. Oh, we're going past Audacious Church here. Continue on A6042 for one mile. Oh, I know where it's taking us. Are you, you alright? Yeah. So, has anything, has God said anything to you through these studies? Is, is there anything that, like, spiritually, that preparing this, these discussions with the Muslims and and everything, has God, like, shared anything with you, like, in, in your studies? I think he's, um, I felt when I was studying that God was, the Holy Spirit was with me with regards <coughs> to what I need to write down, what I need to say to them. Yeah. And I think the best thing to do is, what I think God was saying was defend the word and know the word. Yeah. And it reminds me in the Bible of um, Jericho, where they marched around the, the, the uh, walls of Jericho and eventually the enemy gave up. Yeah. What we're doing, we're marching um, around the walls of Islam and I'm looking for weaknesses. And, yeah. you know, Basically, we're strengthening our position with what we have to say. Mm. So yeah, God is God is just God is using us. I feel like God is using myself and and, and my, fr my brother Jason mightily to to win these Muslims over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Well, you've put a lot of work in it. <coughs> I've I've been I was reading a PhD till two in the morning. Me last night. Wow. On uh, on the incarnation, can God? become a man and change. I looked at Cyril of Alexandria, uh, Tertullian, Athanasius. I was reading till two in the morning, mate. Wow. That's, that's dedication. <laughs> it that's was dedication. So I covered the biblical exegetical grounding of the Son of God. I looked at the philosophical grounding and I looked at the historical grounding. I looked at uh, C. Hill of uh, Reformed Theological Seminary who talked on on there's a guy called Bart Herman who wrote a book um, on the topic and he was saying that Bart Herman was saying that um, Jesus wasn't seen as God it, what it was is that in Judaism there was these exalted exaltatory people like angels yeah. and it was just switched to, to Jesus and that and he was saying well the earliest sources that we have people are worshipping Jesus and you can find that in Irenaeus, Ignatius, uh, you can even find it in secular writing from Tacitus, early sources that say that we Christians worship Jesus. So, so I covered the historical, I covered the philosophical and I covered the exegetical. For uh, I have to say folks, those who are listening in, we're, we're, we've been invited to a mosque, we've, been, we've already been there, there's a video up already of that visit. And we've been invited again as Manchester Street Preachers. There's only two of us this time. We had three last time. And we're just on the way to the mosque and they've invited us to go, the Muslims. So there'll be about three or four Imams. We can't video it in the mosque this time. Uh, so what we're doing, we're just videoing our, our, our driving to the mosque. And then when we're coming back uh, and we're in the car, We'll talk about our experience of what it was like um, going to Moss. So, so that's what we're doing. We're just talking about our research, what we've been doing, and um, thinking about Islam, etc. I think uh, you're right. Yeah, the minimal facts defence. Um, another thing is, 
why would the disciples die for a lie? Why would they be martyred? Why yeah. would they go to such lengths to promote a lie? Christianity yeah. wasn't true. Yeah. Why? Even hostile witness, even hostile sources say <laughs> Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. So if somebody's an enemy of Christ, why would, you know, they're not exactly going to put him in the best light and, and yeah. you know, and they, that wasn't a good thing being crucified, but they, they, they didn't leave it out. Yeah. So the only one that denies Christ's crucifixion is Muhammad. And yeah. probably uh, atheists and other types of people out there who don't know the truth of the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. I think the minimal facts uh, defense of the resurrection is a, a helpful methodology. Um, I think the, uh, the the thing about the attack attack with the Muslims is uh, are you all right. Yeah. Is uh, Gary Habermas gave a lecture on Muslim apologetics and the resurrection and he, and he, and he noticed in Didat's notes in Didat's debates that the way to the way the Muslim try to undermine the resurrection is the way they've always tried to undermine Christianity which is to share, say oh well there are the, the Bible's changed and there's contradictions in the Bible but Coming under that kind of assault, it doesn't undermine that minimal fact, apologetic, because even if they attack the Bible or set contradictions, uh, there are certain basic facts that are accepted by academic scholars that prove the veracity of the Bible's being correct, that we can establish that Christ died on the cross with enemy attestation. And we can also establish that the disciples believed in a resurrection. Most scholars will grant you that. So you've got the basic facts there, uh, which substantiate the Bible. Uh, so those, are, yeah. So I've read um, Gary Abbas's PhD on the minimal facts and most of his material, and also uh, Mike Lacona's book on the resurrection, which came out a few years ago, which uses secular historians and their sources of how to do history and applies that to the resurrection. So, um, I think another thing that we need to do, because I believe in using a variety of apologetic methods, not just being based on one, but another th thing is to use presuppositional apologetics on them. Presuppositional apologetic. Minimal fact is about evidences, historical evidence or scientific evidence. But presuppositional apologetics is to de deal with your foundation. So whenever a Muslim is quoting the Bible or attacking the Bible or talking about the resurrection, are they doing it objectively or are they doing it being biased by the Quran? And if they're being biased by the Quran, then we need we need to look at that bias first before we look at the evidence. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So rather than give them the chance to look at the evidence, get them before that and say, well, let's look at your foundation. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, for example, you can be debating a Muslim and they'll quote the Bible here, they quote the Bible there, but they're looking at the Bible. Turn right. In a quarter of a mile, turn left onto Oxford Road. They're looking at the Bible from, uh, say, green glasses. So no matter how many Bible verses you quote, they're just going to see green glasses. So we've got to take their green glasses off, say they're a load of rubbish, and put our red glasses on, as it were. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly. That's the problem, that is the problem at Hyde Park, is the Christian apologists there are getting battered all over the place. Yeah because they're allowing them to go into the Bible and critique the Bible yeah. rather than throwing them on the back foot and critiquing the Quran. And whenever Christians at Hyde Park actually uh, start to criticize the Quran, the Muslims fall apart. They, they, they don't like it. They don't like, they don't like their Quran being put under the spotlight. Yeah, okay. and, and they find it really troubling and difficult to handle. Yeah, you know, and yet they, if we put the same amount of pressure on the Quran as they put on the Bible, they just fall apart. Yeah. 
But they won't let you do that, they just go straight into the attack, straight don't they? The Bible. They always try to establish if the Bible, they won't let you talk unless they think the Bible's from God. And if they won't talk about the Quran, it's always the Bible. They always attack the Bible because they won't accept the implications of the Bible. Mm. If God, if God, if the Quran is from God, it should stand up to scru scrutiny, shouldn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. It should stand up to scrutiny, and Muslims shouldn't be offended if people criticise it because people criticise the Bible in my presence. Um, I don't take offence. I just think it's lack of knowledge. It's just a lack of understanding, lack of knowledge. Yeah. And. And they always say that in order for me and me to understand the Quran, I'm not an imam, so I can't understand the Quran according to their knowledge, and I must be a master in Arabic. Yeah. But God is a God that can make His word understandable in all languages, because if He's only understandable in Arabic, then that isn't a God that I would want to trust or put my hope in. Yeah, yeah. But that shows it's a limited God, and God isn't limited by language. Yeah, and some other points on that as well. They say we need to know Arabic to critique the Quran. Mm. They'll critique the Bible, but they don't know Hebrew and Greek. Yes, yes. You know, so a double standard there. And, and secondly, the Gnostics believe that they only had the superior knowledge. And unless you had the superior knowledge, you couldn't know about their faith. And that is this Arabic language argument is the same as Gnosticism. We're superior because we have a superior knowledge. And unless you study it in Arabic, you can't understand it. So it's an elitist kind of faith. Yeah. It's not for the common people. Amen, exactly, it's not. And well, what we can say about the church is the church is a place where the average man, woman, child can go and they don't have to dress a certain way or do a certain thing. They can just come as they are, you know, yeah. and they can go and get prayer and they can get healing, they can get restoration. Yeah. You know, God doesn't... We're not perfect before God. It reminds me of a passage in the Bible where it talks about the whitewashed tombs. Yeah. It says they look clean on the outside, but inside it's just full of dead man's bones. And I want to see all these beautiful mosques in the world and they're completely white and purity white and they're all putting this outward show of purity. Inside yeah. it's dead. It's dead. The dead Bible's men's bones. Dead yeah. men's bones. The Bible says we're dead. And we need to be born from above. We need a regeneration. Mm. We need a spiritual rebirth. And Islam does not offer that. Does not offer mm. that or give it. Only Jesus Christ can do that. Mm. Jesus says you must be born again. Born again of the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus knew all the Bible. He knew the Old Testament inside and out, but he didn't know God Amen. until he was touched by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said you must be born again. You can know the Quran inside and out, but has your heart been changed? Do you know the love of God? in your life today are you saved by the grace of God and the, and the, the Old Testament says as well when you when the Bible sorry when the the Bible also says when you pray to God don't be like pagans babbling like pagans do and mm. when Muslims when Muslims are um, reciting the Quran they do it for, I've seen them do it for hours on end and they believe that by the many words that God will hear them no <coughs> That's that's what pagans do. That's hypocrisy. Mm. He says when they stand on street corners, they do it so they can be seen by mm. to be seen by others. Mm. You know. And Jesus says, do not let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Mm. He says when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites that cringe their faces. Mm. He says when you fast, do it in secret, and what you do in secret, your heavenly Father will see and he'll reward you for doing so. Wow. I agree. It's good stuff. Amen. Amen. So I, I just say to Muslims, God is good. Mm. And God isn't a religion. God is a real, he's real, he's a mighty spirit. He's the living God, he's the God of the living. Mm. Mm. I just ask you to come to this God mm. and not put your trust in the false God of, of Islam, which is Allah. Yeah. One point I've got to make, Mike, <coughs> yeah. is, that when we're having these discussions with Muslims and debates, we watched a video of a guy from Pakistan gave his heart to the Lord. Yes, he did. And he gave his heart to the Lord and he fled to Malaysia in fear of his life. Muslims who are converted to Christianity fear their life. They 
they are persecuted. So all the debates and discussions we have with Muslims, it's not fair because you're free if you're a Christian to become a Muslim, but you're not free as a Muslim to become a Christian. Mm. And so when Muslims say, oh, millions of people or loads of people are leaving Christianity and becoming Muslims, well, it's not a fair comparison because we don't hold a sword above people mm. saying, if you leave Christianity, we'll kill you. But there is in places like Pakistan and, and other countries where there is a doctrine of blasphemy laws and apostasy laws where if you leave, Christ, if you leave Islam, you will lose your life. I asked a Muslim the other day, is that true? And he said, yeah. So what kind of a religion is it if you have an apostasy law where your family or the state can kill you if you leave Islam? That's not, that can't be the truth. And, and how can they say how can they say Islam is a religion of peace when it says anyone who leaves their religion they must be killed? What that's that just cut, totally goes against that statement. Yeah. Islam doesn't actually mean peace; it actually means submission. In a quarter of a mile, continue yeah. on to it's, a, it's a false concept of peace because if Islam is Islam is a peaceful religion, then we wouldn't be reading the news all the time or all these stories or bombings and people. Being for this religion. Yeah, say that again, because that was good, that point. If, that... As a, if Islam was the religion of peace, as so claimed by many Muslims, why are we not seeing this peace? Every it's time I read the paper or read the news, someone's, having, the someone's being killed in the name of Allah. Mm. Now that tells me that isn't a religion of peace. That's all we agree, mate. You know, and then, then, then the Muslims will say, oh, it, that isn't Islam, the, the, the making a mockery of Islam, the misquoting the text. That's exactly what Islam teaches. There's no, there's no uh, mercy there, forgiveness. Yeah. It teaches these things. The real face of Islam is what you're reading in the paper, as far yeah. as I can see. Yeah. Well. And you can't um, polish something that is totally dirty. Touch early, but what? I mean, 20 minutes early. Go on. Okay. There's a mosque. We're now at the mosque. Okay. This is the mosque where we've been invited to come. And I think I think today, Jay, what we what we need to do is just to stand on the word of God. Yeah. Just to stand on that word. That word has authority. We watched the video before, and we just stand on that word. Yeah. Because none can change his words, as the Quran states. Yeah. And the Bible says God's word stands forever. The flower may fade, and the grass may wither, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Yeah. None can change his words. God doesn't abrogate his words. He doesn't replace it with something better, because the first time he speaks was good enough. Oh. Another question, another thing I noticed as well when dealing with Muslims, they say that the Quran is preserved on eternal tablets in heaven. Oh. Now, if that was 